Well, no more, Heidi Mai, my fellow Solstrom classmates, 1989 to 1993. Now, just got off um, from watching Sky TV and watching the stream First 15 Play Town uh, at stream. Beautiful day for rugby here and um, a really good game, actually. Um, pretty tightly fought like most of the games are, but stream the victors today, which is fantastic. And they, they took the game out 18 points to 12. Looked like a good crowd there, too. I know there's a couple of boys up there. Um, I know Beast, um, Damien Curtis is up there. He's coming down a bit early for our dinner this weekend. But um, it looked like a decent crowd up there and um, have fun. But good victory for um, for the stream boys. Now, we are doing, what are we doing now? 48. Video number 48. So we're almost at 50, which is just bloody awesome. We've only got three more days to go until we catch up for this uh, dinner of ours. Uh, our next interviewee, friend and fellow classmate, Old boy is beaming in live from Australia. He's one of the uh, Aussie crew that we, of course, would really love to have here join us. But unfortunately, of course, the COVID circumstances have taken care of that. And, um, and they're in uh, either lockdown or partial lockdown um, in their respective states in Australia. Now, this old boy, um, good all-rounder, fantastic footy player, loved his rugby. Played some very good rugby in the first 15 uh, at St. Pat's Stream. Um, went on to become, uh, well, involved um, with uh, sport and exercise as part of his life and, and his, um, his uh, post-Silver Stream studies. And, and it's what he does in this, uh, as a profession today. But I'll let him explain all that. I know you guys have been asking after him because I've been hearing about it and I've been getting messages. So here he is to answer all for himself and to catch up with you fellas, the one and only, the fellow we call Blues, it's Andrew Blumen. G'day, Andy. Hey, how you going? Good, mate, and wonderful to see you. Uh, myself, personally, I haven't seen you since school, so it's wonderful to see you and hear that familiar voice, that familiar Blues <laughs> voice. And, mate, thanks, thanks for joining us all the way over there in Aussie. Yeah, no, no problem. I was pretty keen to catch up because I thought I should get this done just just before the dinner this weekend, because I thought things might fade a bit after the dinner. So, Yeah, thanks, nice man. Well, look, yeah. the boys have been asking about you, so let's get straight into it so we can find out a little bit about what you've been up to uh, all these years. But like everyone else, let's start at the beginning, Blues. Take us back. So take us back to what brought you along to, to St. Pat's, to Silver Stream. How many years did you end up doing? And, and sort of can you remember your first memories of, of school? Yeah, um, I was a local Silverstream boy, actually. So I grew up in Silverstream, um, went to St. Brendan's. So there's a few of the other boys have mentioned that. Um, like guys like Chris White and Dan Boyle and Aidan Byron. Um, just went to primary school with them. And then we all decided to go to Silverstream. It was just the natural progression with the Catholic sort of movement. Um, I, had, I was a day boy in third form. And then my dad got a job overseas in England. So... I moved over to England for my fourth form year. Um, and then I came back and boarded sort of fifth, sixth, seventh form. Um, that was mainly, my parents just wanted me involved in the education system in New Zealand. So I said, yeah. come back for your school cert. And, and to be honest, I love boarding. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It was tough initially to fit in. Um, I think probably what found it hard was you've got all the guys who've already been there since third form and they're quite a tight knit group. I mean, a lot of people have touched on that. And then just coming back as a boarder who had been a day boy, it's kind of like people sort of knew you, but they sort of didn't. So trying to fit in initially was tough, but oh, after, you know, first term and once the rugby season kicks off, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. I've got great memories of school. I absolutely loved it. So. Oh, awesome. Now, so when people talk about boarding school, I always think, oh, I'd say, yeah, highly recommend it. Yeah. So your, best things ever. Yeah. your first year boarding then, I think, was the same year that I actually boarded. So that would have been your fifth form year yeah. in 91? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So what, can you remember what dorm you were in and, and who was in it? I had, uh, what's his name? The Mary boy, Daniel. He was a seventh former. Dan. Dan Gray. Dan Gray, that's it. Oh, Dan yep. Gray. Derek Logan. Yep. Um, Greg. Buyers, I was pretty sure Greg Burke was there as well. Maybe, um, I can't remember the others really. Oh, nice! I remember nice. Dan Gray. Oh, he was mental, he just he was crazy. <laughs> he, was, he was crazy. Now, mate, you, you love, quick in, you you love quick into 
happened to a day at the races up at Trentham. Oh, classic. Me yeah. out there and trying to keep up with him was just a nightmare. Got carried back to school and yeah. Oh, <laughs> it was yeah. a good start. <laughs> now, look, you loved your rugby. You played some bloody good rugby at Stream. Um, did you play uh, rugby or any senior rugby after school? Yeah, um, I played just at Otago. And so I ended up, I played, ended up playing Prems down there in my fifth year. Um, we did okay. It was pretty tough. I mean, it was really, what was enjoyable, I think, about it was that you, there was a lot of, Otago at the time were a really good team. So you had a lot of, you know, Otago guys that would play club comp and, you know, they had a lot of All Blacks at the time too. So the odd All Black would occasionally play in the club comp too. So Yeah, awesome. It was really good. Absolutely loved it. Um, you know, I did play one year here in Australia. Um, just when I first came over, played Eastern Suburbs. Um, and again, we we had a really strong club. So I said I played second grade there. I mean, our first grade, we had like sort of 10, 15 Waratahs players. But they'd have these full on live trainings on like a Thursday night. So you're just trying to take out your opposite. So you get a start in first grade. Jesus. It was just full on. It was so different to New Zealand where it's all hitting tackle bags and pads and less contact during the week. But the actual training here was just full on, which was uh -huh. good and bad. You know? Yeah, yeah. Was fun. I, really, I didn't mind it here. And then I gave it away just because of because I was being a personal trainer and the injury risk and all that side of it. So, yeah. But no, I definitely, definitely sort of miss it sometimes. I think oh, it'd be nice to play. <laughs> but <old man. laughs> well there's a few photos floating around um on our on our page and you were in a number of them um what did you do well, tell us about the first year you left school so what did where did you end up going so i went down to otago uni and did our uh, physical education um went down with boz but yeah greg burke was down there as well colin hancock sort of saw a bit of them at the start um, but yeah, mainly sort of hung out with Boz. He was the main sort of silver stream boy I hung out with. And yeah, I did PE and finished that at four years. And I did a fifth year because I was supposed to finish a B commerce as well. But my fifth year was a bit of a fail, really. Yeah. <laughs> got a bit oh. carried away from my style and just wasn't really that interested in it, to be honest. So, yeah, yeah. Fair, cool. Well, look, obviously. I didn't go back to work too early. I was glad I didn't start work too early because it was just, it was good fun. I mean, those yeah. years of school and then going to uni were just some of the best years of your life like just stress-free and fun and you know not until you get in the workforce and things are a bit busier you know yeah. family life yeah. and all the rest of it yeah absolutely now i can tell by your uh, your shirt there uh sports fit is is that the name of your business and and tell us a little bit more about what you currently do yeah so i started off working in a gym and then just the local guy there he was he was a personal trainer and he sort of teed me up and said oh you should get into personal training and so i started working for him for a bit um and then the gym closed and I just eventually just went on my own. Um, I was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. I still do some one-on-ones, but I've moved more into groups now. Um, just like boot camp style, a lot of corporate groups. Yep. Now most of these people all sit around lunch, you know, they, they work in an office and they don't do much during the day. So they want to get out in the day and do something physical. And yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, I really enjoy it. And I've, I've done a lot of rugby coaching as well, actually. It's sort of an offshoot of all that. Just kids stuff, all junior, kid, junior kids rugby. Wow. So the personal so, train the personal training side, um, you obviously meet all walks of life. Have you yeah. trained have you trained any um sort of what do you call it either celebrities or any senior sports people at all? No, nah, I'm more just a general, general population. I sort of did think about initially that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go into the whole strength and conditioning route, but it's a tough gig. Yeah. And generally athletes don't have much money. So yeah. You know, it's much easier to train people that are just general corporates and they've got the money to pay for it and more reliable. And I've actually got quite a lot of elderly people now, sort of they've all grown up with me over the last 20 years and people in their sort of 50s and 60s. And Wow. So what you've, you've literally got customers you've had for about 20 years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I don't, I've had a lot of long-term clients really. I'm quite very fortunate. Like even during COVID when we weren't allowed to train at all, I had people still still happy to just, they'll just keep paying you regularly. I mean, that's... It's all part of it and we'll look after you. And so awesome. yeah, it's wow. cool. I've got some really good people. So wonderful. Now, you're coming to us from Oz. Tell us about your travels in life. Have you done a fair bit of travel overseas? A little bit. I did I probably didn't do as much as what a lot of other people have because um because I'd done a lot of travels when I was younger with my parents living overseas. So because they'd lived in England and all um Singapore and Hong Kong, I'd sort of done a lot of travel already. So I came straight to Oz with a mate from uni. You know, I've generally been here most of the time. I mean, I've done holidays to Fiji and went across to the 99 World Cup in oh, England. Nice. Yeah. So that's caught up with Will and 
uh, Mike Byrne and some of those guys were all over there then. So, oh. um, yeah, even originally the first year I had here in Sydney, uh, Mike Byrne was, oh, not Mike Byrne, it was, yeah, no, it was Paddy and Will and I don't know if you know Michael Hooper. No, no, Mark Hooper. Oh, Dave Hooper. There's a few, yep. whole crew of them you know, that came up here and just working in construction and stuff. So we had a good time here for that sort of first year before they all moved on and went overseas. Wow. And but whereabouts, yeah, like travels, really. yeah. whereabouts in um, Sydney or New South Wales are you? Uh, we're up sort of north north shore, really. So French's Forest, which is near the northern beaches, really. Nice. They're not that far from sort of Manly and Kilco and DY, that sort of thing. So. Okay. Okay. And but we're, we're fortunate from a COVID point of view. There's not really many cases up this way. Right. Oh, good. So it's good. More, more, it started off east and then now it's all that west and southwest. And so it's all yeah. a disaster over there. It's just fully everywhere now. They've lost control, really. Yeah, yeah, certainly been following it on the media here, and man, you know the protests and things, and that were pretty, pretty full on. Oh, the protests are terrible. Like, it's just a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are pretty upset about that over here. Just a bit, a bit. It just prolongs the it prolongs the lockdown, and now they're just putting them putting their hopes on the vaccine, really. Um, yeah, totally. Now, what about family? Are you, are you married? Do you have children? Tell us a little bit about that side of your life. Yeah, I got. I was married for fifteen years. Um, that. Didn't work out in the end. I had three kids with her. Um, so those my kids there, they're what, 17, 15 year old boys, and then a daughter who's no, sorry, 15, 17 and 16, daughter's 12. Awesome. And awesome. then I've got a new partner now who I've got an eight, eight months old with. Oh, so you're starting again, Blues. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty full on when you're older, eh? So <laughs> yeah. tolerance isn't quite as good as it used to be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But oh, congr- much congr- congratulations. So. That's great, mate. So you got um, uh, a, a, a blended family. You got four kids, ranging yep. from seventeen to what you say, or four months. Oh, down to, uh, for eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Oh, yeah. God, some of the boys have cranked out seven and oh, seven <laughs> girls. I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. You, your mate Jamie Williams has done done all right, just quietly. He's got a little tribe now. Yeah, so I've actually watched all the videos. So I've seen everyone's. So oh, I loved it. It's loved seeing all the videos. It's really good. Oh, that's going to be my next question. So that's good on you and for watching them. So you've enjoyed sort of just hearing everyone's banter and stories and what they've been up to? Oh, yeah, I've loved it. It's really good. I've really enjoyed seeing people, just seeing how people see things differently over the years. And I, I, I didn't realise so many people left after sixth form. It's been said many times, I, this. Yep. I don't remember that at all. Yeah. And I look yeah. back and I think, oh, it might have been quite handy having some of these extra guys for our first 15 in seventh form. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I might have won some of those tight games we lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I see, and, and thanks for mentioning it because I, I, I don't even remember you. So you missed the whole fourth form year. So third yeah, form, yeah, yeah. fourth form went overseas and then back yep. for fifth form. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. You just don't remember, do you? But it's just, yeah. And, and just think how people see things differently. Like how Scotty was talking about that. Um, you know, we had those flagons up at Trentham Memorial Park. Yes. He made that comment. He goes, "Oh, your brother B came in with blues and headlock," and I was like, "I remember the story differently. I remember brother B coming in and grabbing me, and going, oh, I knew you must be drunk because Scotty J is walking sideways down the hall.'" <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. You know what? I always, I don't, I don't know why, but I think it's because I end up getting one. But I always remember you for one of two things: a Columbia jacket and a wreck jacket. <laughs> yeah. um, you know the one I'm talking about? You know the one, yeah. Yep, you always wore that in boat shoes. Boat shoes. Yeah. Always used to bust out the old boat shoes. Right. Probably could have got them cheap in Hong Kong or Singapore or something. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you've got heaps of memories of school, but have you got any that have really stuck out over the years that you still think of to this day that you can share with the guys? Yeah, some of them, are, a lot of them are around rugby. I mean, it's always the rugby and the social life that I love so much. Um, yeah. Like even Paddy, when he talked about that Tristan Mayo thing with um, Wellington College, yeah, I just remember that moment when Fubi just smashed him, and like, and his jersey came up, and I remember just thinking, just standing all over him, just thinking it was like heads lights lit up, and just like right, this is on. Wow. And then when he went off injured, it was just like we're going to win this game. But like, Fubi just set up that so that whole game so well. Um, and then the other one was. When against Palmy Boys, just that whole day, like we played Palmy Boys, I think it was our last game of the season. We won like 13 10. And then we had our ball that night. And it was just the best day because we'd won rugby. We all went back to Lee Smith's place. 
and we got on it and just had the best night. It was just, and I look back at that ball and just go, we're allowed to drink at that ball. Oh, that would never happen now. No, that's right. Yeah. But I remember thinking, I thought we had a two drink limit, but I remember at the time thinking it was just open bar. You could just drink whatever you wanted. And yeah. I thought, imagine that now at school balls, there's no way they'd let you drink. No, no. Well, and just that whole day was just such a fun day. Like just, you know, good rugby win, good fun at the ball. And just, and then we, I think we went back to some, I can't remember, I think Stacker and some guys organised an after party thing at, uh, it wasn't the tote, it was one of the hotels or something and they had the exponents there. And, oh, wow. Oh, such a good, good night. I mean, yeah. That was awesome. What a great bumped, night. One of the guys in my first year of hostel at uni, um, he actually played in that Palmy boys team. Oh, wow. And um, we were sort of giving a bit of shit about it. And he goes, he goes, oh, who was that inside center of yours? Um, he goes, oh, I went to put a hit on him. And he goes, it was like hitting a brick wall. And I was like, yeah, that was Fui. Like, Fui was just rock solid, you know. Yeah. And he yeah. Was quite, this guy was quite a good player and, you know, a bit of a solid guy. But he just goes, oh, he was so good. Wow. You know, I took oh. that one up for Fui. He can be happy to, happy he heard him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fui, Fui will be watching this. Um, so that's awesome. He'll love to hear that. And you mentioned a yeah, great, yeah. you mentioned a great name there, uh, uh, Lee Smith, who who unfortunately passed away. He's no longer with us. Um, yeah, I said to hear that. So he was he was he was an amazing coach. Like, yeah, he's one of those coaches. I remember always looking forward to training. He was just a good guy. Training was fun. We learned a lot. Yeah, it just changed the way you looked at watching a game and you know what you thought about a game. Yeah, he was awesome. yeah, top bloke. And you'll be happy to know. Um, uh, in a few hours, actually, Jake Smith is going to be doing an oh, yeah. interview. So we'll get to hear from Jake, um, Lee's, Lee's son. Well, you know, that's what... Do you keep in touch with anyone from stream at all these days? No, I've been pretty slack, really. Um, you get tied up in family life and stuff. But yeah, yeah. I did initially, like, you know, as I sort of said, I Pat and Will and that were over here initially when I first came to Sydney. Um, I've caught up with Bo Boz off and on over the years. Yeah. Just to sort of, you know, spend a lot of time at uni together. It was, we had a big stag do here about 10 years ago that he came across and a whole lot of the uni guys came to. Nice. But yeah, generally I've been pretty slack really. It's, that's why, I mean, I was, I'm gutted that I can't come across. It would have been so good. Yeah, I know, mate. You can get the timetable and I oh, sort of be unreal. Yeah, the boys are all the same. Hey, but that's all good. Look, we've got something started now. So, you know, when this bloody COVID gets under control, you know, we will we'll definitely be doing more things. And there's even talk of, and I think it's pretty serious now, that of, of the boys coming over to Oz. Um, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe, maybe around a big um, footy game or something. And then, um, yeah. you know. I but, thought I might try and invite myself on this golf trip as well, if someone wants to invite me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd love yeah. to come. I thought, oh, yeah, that'd be good. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, mate. I'm sure an invite. Back in that jacket? But yeah. We have to take it off um, Aiden. Yeah, yeah. Now, Sounds like some of the guys have done pretty well, haven't they? Some of the boys have done exceptionally well. Um, but what's bloody neat is they're still the boys. Um, they've just remained themselves, humble. You know, um, I think of Jamie Williams, who runs this massive operation here in, in yeah. NZ, you know, but he still rocks into his bars and his jandals and his, you know, and his yeah. shorts, and he's just a bro. He does, doesn't, half the time, the staff don't even know who he is, and that's exactly how he wants it. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You know, well, people just... don't change that much when you watch these interviews. Nah, people nah. Pretty similar. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but it's bloody good, mate. Now the boys are going to be watching this very soon because we'll get this out this arvo. Um, have you got a message that you want to send out to the guys? Oh, just get over really, and yeah, hopefully I'll be able to catch up at some stage. Um, it'd be brilliant if you could organise something coming to Sydney. That'd be really good. Um, but yeah, either way, I'd love to come along to golf, and I'll just be keen to catch up with anyone really, and just yeah. Revisit the old days and yeah, oh, you know, life sort of settled down a bit. And yep, and as, as Hugo said, I thought he made, made good sense too. And Hugo just goes, You know, just be happy, be happy in your life. I thought, Yeah, it's such a good thing, so true. And Brother Beats comment actually when he said, Yeah, work out how much money you need. Yeah, but don't bust yourself trying to make more money than you need. Yeah, yeah, uh, there's this straight blues. I thought, I thought both of those comments um, were just um, on the money, really, so to speak. They were. You know, just just perfect. Well, there you go, fellas. The one and only man himself, Blues. Thanks so much for joining us. You haven't changed a bit. You still look bloody uh, fit as. Looks like you can still put on a on a uh, rugby jersey and, and play a few minutes still. Um, a bit old and broken now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for joining us, mate. And I really do appreciate your time. Let's keep in touch. And um, 
look, we'll be raising a glass for you guys on uh, on Saturday night. We'll take a video um, of, yeah, of, of all of us so we can share it with you boys and let's keep in touch. But there you go, guys. Your classmate and mine, Blues Andrew Blumen. Thanks, Blues. Cheers, guys. <laughs>